<laughs> so I'm standing here with Alexander at the East Capital Monster. East Capital, what do you do? What, what kind of investors are you? So we are uh, active investors. We are working with emerging uh, markets and frontier markets uh, these days, not only Eastern Europe, as we did many years before. We are as well, of course, uh, currently as well. So you, you, you still invest in, in Russia and Eastern Europe and, uh, and these countries? We do. And we see some uh, interest coming back after a bit of a uh, stressful couple of years. So now it's uh, a little bit of reverse of, of interest from investors globally okay. to emerging markets, but also this uh, new, new markets up and coming, this called so-called frontier markets. What are those? So it's a, a broad portfolio, basically. We are investing from Bangladesh in Vietnam uh, to Argentina to uh, frontiers in Eastern Europe as, as Romania. But uh, there is no plans of calling you frontier capital? There is no plans of, of changing the name. No, no. Okay, so there is some inflow again in the, in the, the Eastern European markets. Uh, what else is going on with the frontier markets? So, uh, for one, yeah, we see inflows again. Uh, I think global investors has been uh, underweight to emerging markets in general over the last couple of years. Uh, but now see that these are markets that are uh, lagging ahead, the global equity rally. Uh, for the frontier side, we see uh, uncorrelated assets. So, mm -hmm. during the recent volatility we have seen in the markets, we can see frontiers actually providing less volatile uh, could you could you a little bit open up what does these frontiers mean involve what, what, what are we talking about what kind of investments yes so a lot of companies uh, over the world well, a lot of uh, countries over the world as yeah. well so the, but the only thing in common is that they are closed for foreigners they're basically uh, having a lack of, of capital markets so you either need a license or it's state-owned companies that are about to be privatized uh, etc so a lot of reforms that are going on along with this huge growth in the economy. Oh, that's interesting. It's, it's, it's like Finland in the 90s then. I'm, too, I'm too young maybe. <laughs> <laughs> The foreigners couldn't invest in the yeah. Finnish stock markets, uh, or at least it was uh, uh, sort of uh, restricted yeah. to a very high degree. So that's what you do now. You get you you, you sort of uh, uh, become pals with the with the, the 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 state heads, and then you get a sort of a free pass to invest in these frontier markets, and then you you can sort of open up access for your investors. Is that sort of a a good summary, or, or I would say more or less because that's what we did back in 97 when Peter started uh, the company uh, we're trying to uh, uh, be engaged with both uh, organizations and, and the states uh, of course but also uh, these kind of companies that are, are actually uh, catching the uh, growing consumer and I think we do the same uh, the same uh, have the same philosophy still and trying to be exposed to this uh, privately entrepreneurial company Companies and, and catch this uh, growth uh, in, in local economies. So, how do you then manage risk? I mean, uh, risk is obviously higher in the frontier markets. I mean, they are they were higher in the Eastern European markets and probably still are, partly because of uh, Western capital behavior related to these mm -hmm. these emerging markets, but. Uh, Frontier markets. Then it sounds like that's that's something that you should have sort of helmets on when you go in there. Yeah, exactly. Because that's one. I mean, part of or character of, of of the the concept. And each specific country is actually very, you can say, riskful. Mm. Uh, but compiling in a global portfolio, a broader portfolio, you actually lower the the. the, the each specific country risk, so you, you can reduce that. But so you are not sort of con you don't run concentrated portfolios, but you rather sort of uh, diversify like crazy and have a lot of of uh, investments. Or or how should I understand that? We try to keep a fairly concentrated portfolio in in in, uh, in sense of holdings, yeah. but uh, in sense of uh, countries or or regions, we are we are very diverse. Okay. okay. Which has been good to see that our strategy actually is working. Uh, this specific fund went uh, uh, 
the, went best, it was the best frontier fund during 2017 if you compare global uh, frontier uh, markets funds. So, had so a good three year track record. That's good to hear. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so, my interpretation of this is that if you are a serious uh, low cost invest, uh, index investor, believer like mm -hmm. me yeah. uh, and you're looking for some flavor or some some sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, extra exposure to your investment portfolio um, East Capital is the way to go because you are truly active managers you actually speak mm. fluently the language of the countries that you are investing in uh, and uh, and uh, you actually uh, invest in countries that that are sort of as you said pre-opening up you have a bright future I see yeah well of course there are a lot of <laughs> passive uh, investors around and uh, it's uh, it's of course a, a perfect uh, way to get exposure to a market but we see a lot of ineffective uh, opportunities in emerging markets where indices often are very skewed or or, yeah. or uh, mismatch to specific very big com companies uh, but also on the sustainability and, and what we call ESG how to yeah. be kind of a active shareholder what kind of uh, pressure do we feel as an owner of these companies and what kind of uh, incentives has the ownership in the companies are, there, are those aligned and mm. that's, that has been the case since I think the start of, of the company uh, know what kind of owners that we are investing with. So you are not only bringing uh, Western capital to emerging markets you are also bringing all these kinds of uh, uh, responsibleness into into these countries and regions that you are investing in. Yes I would like to say so we uh, have in I mean, standardized our process for portfolio managers uh, to include like a rating of all their key active positions mm. so we are trying to grade our, our uh, in most important companies that we invest in mm. and, and these companies funnily enough are now starting to ask us how do we score our right. sustainability score and that's just one element of impacting uh, companies in, in how to, to be more sustainable yeah. which we think in the long run is uh, aligned with the uh, interest of, of uh, returns yeah all right thanks a lot thank you